Hi. My name is Mimi. My name is Steven. My name is Bing Ling. How did you get involved in science? So um, I first got involved in science in elementary school. I was very interested in my science class. We were like doing earth science. I mean, it was very like easy stuff, like talking about worms and um, just like we were looking at light bulbs and stuff and like circuits. And that got me very interested. And my teacher noticed, so he recommended me to do a program, a one day program at the science museum. And while I was there, we got to like dissect squids. And that was like very fun for me. <laughs> So ever since I've been like very interested and like involved with science. Basically, how did you connect us with science at first? Mm -hmm. At first, um, I connected through like all, a lot of my um, my siblings, for example, because my brother he he was also very strong in the sciences and um, he majored in biology at BC too. So like just watching him like go through it and like get re really involved with science as well, that got me very connected with it. And um, just like, I also used to watch a lot of like Animal Planet and like the Science Channel, and I used to like love it. So and I also, I also really loved like Sid the Science Kid. <laughs> when you grew up a little bit more, like in high school, mm -hmm. and you had to study a lot, do you feel discouraged because it's not as fun as you thought it would be? Yeah, sometimes um, in high school, I definitely did feel that because. You're like you're like you said it wasn't as fun um especially like with AP chemistry it was a lot of just like doing meticulous I mean um doing hard work and just like writing down equations and memorizing things but um in college as soon as I got to see like the lab aspect of it especially oh also in CSA like Javier he makes he makes science fun so just like um having lab with him and also like having lab in college it made it very interesting for me. Basically, in, I know in college and stuff, when you're mm -hmm. taking classes, it's gonna be hard. Mm -hmm. So basically, how did you overcome those obstacles that you faced during those mm -hmm. years? So overcoming the obstacles in college was more of me like seeking out the um, help I needed by going to office hours and talking to the TAs. And that was, like, that was very helpful because um, I was able to get any, like to clarify any questions I had and go over like the material so I could do well on exams and like quizzes. Were there any specific mentors that helped you through that journey? Yeah, so like a couple people helped me. I know like um, with CSA, some of the mentors that were like mentoring me when I was in CSA, they, um, when I got to Harvard, they were still there. And uh, a lot of them were pre-med as well. So they helped me um, find the classes I needed to take and they also like helped me find the resources I needed to like navigate um, the campus as well as like navigate my science classes. Um, so either of you can answer. Um, how did you guys get involved in uh, science? Well, for science, um, in fifth grade, I, I had a really good science teacher. He, uh, his name is Mr. Springer, and in his class, we did, we did a lot of um, in class projects. So like I remember one. Uh, really well. It's how we uh, built a car out of cardboard and I also put lights in there and how to um, light it up with batteries and such. So that was really cool and um, it's allowed me to go more into um, designing and stuff like that. Like Aaron said, school really did introduce me into science. Like everybody has school and so like that's basically where I first got my interaction with science. Like, and ever since I had that interaction with science, I saw, like, a love for it. Like, the questions that were being answered, like, I've always thought about it, like, what makes humans, and, like, those were being answered by the science that we were learning at school. And so that's how I got involved into it. So following your involvement in science, how did you continually connect to science? Um, for science, I noticed that I liked more of the theories of science and how it related to um, sort of philosophy and the way of life and so um, I'm, I'm really into astronomy and um, stars and so uh, I just find interest in that and I want to pursue in that too. Yeah like I said earlier it was basically just like answering those questions you always think about as a kid like what makes animals what happens what's up there in the sky the stars all that and basically that connected me to science at first because like that curiosity pushed me to a point where I was just like, I need to know more. And so that's how I stayed connected with it. 
Um, so while like pursuing this kind of career and like this interest in science, did you face any obstacles and how you maybe overcame those obstacles? Obstacles for me were definitely lab reports. I don't like lab <laughs> reports. So um, it's just that putting words, writing it down for science is hard for me because it's so much detail. You can never, you can never really stop explaining and explaining because there's so much. It's an endless amount of information. And so knowing <coughs> what is key information to put into lab reports and what's uh, correct and stuff like that, I thought that was pretty ch challenging. Me, my main obstacle, probably, well, I had two main obstacles. One of them was probably like the vocabulary because like every time the vocabulary would change from topic to topic and it'd get a little confusing. And so my other obstacle was probably the actual students around there because most of my science interactions happened at school. And so the students usually were a little rowdy. And so I didn't get to, you know, take away as much as I could from the science. Yeah, basically, I don't want to blame them, but it kind of <laughs> was their fault. Um, so you mentioned lab reports and you mentioned struggling to memorize and rowdy kids. So how did you overcome those obstacles? Overcoming them? Well... Uh, CSA, there was a mentor who helped me, um, who told me that um, what was correct to put into lab report and what was really like, not correct. So, um, yeah, uh, it was like tutoring and mentors and stuff like that. For me, I mean, the kids that were rowdy, like, as they got older, eventually they matured up a little. But, like, you still see that issue today, but it's not as bad as it used to be, so I'm learning more from it. And the vocab, basically, I just got to drill it in my head, like, practice and practice. And that's something I don't do, so, like, it's still an obstacle I face today. Hi, guys. Want to introduce yourselves? I'm Ellen. I'm Thais. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Um, why is diversity important for science? Um, I feel like nowadays there's a majority of people dominating the science world. I think that if we bring diversity to it, um, we can get more results and more diverse answers. So I think that's why there should be diversity in the science world. Definitely. I agree with what she said and like diversity, whether it be in race, gender, stuff like that. I think that when you bring a new perspective into the field and you bring different ways to solve the problem at hand, then you can choose from like a variety of answers and pick out the best one rather than just choose from a select few. So that brings out the best in all the answers. Definitely. Um, so how did you guys get involved in science? Um, major, majorly school, but since I was young, my mom used to work at the Mass General Hospital in Haiti and she used to bring me to like her workplace and as she worked in the lab, I saw that science can be used to help people. So that basically influenced me to stay connected and to pursue a career in science. Yeah, um, when I was little, my dad used to be an entomologist, which is like a scientist that studies bugs, <laughs> which kind of freaked me out at first, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so he would take me to the natural... Um, history museum and he would show me like all these exhibits, exhibits and go like do you see that this is like science and that got me interested because I would see all these cool things and I'd be like wow this is something I want to do in the future and I picked my interest basically. Okay. Um, how did you connect to science at first? Um, I stay connected with science basically with my mother. Um, we talk about the new developments of science and since I want to pursue a medical career I feel like it's the best way that I can provide to society and helping like the best way I know how. Um, I think I connected to science um, both like what I said earlier with like the museum mm -hmm. and also with some like my teachers at school. Um, I know I remember this one uh, teacher I had called Mr. Adler and what he would do, he was extremely cheesy, first off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he would make all these puns and stupid jokes. Nice. And then that began to make me like, really like this person, mm -hmm. like his personality as a whole. And then that got me in turn interested in what he was teaching. And he would like make us wear these stupid little hats. And it was really adorable. And that got me interested in science. Mm 
So a lot of role models and positive light in your science experience. Yes. Yeah. That's nice. If you guys didn't have those role models, do you guys think you guys would be inside like mm -hmm. science? Um, I think I still would, um, but it wouldn't have the major impact in my life that I have now. I think like through science classes, I would still like be connected with it, but it wouldn't have like a major influence in my life choices that mm -hmm. I plan to do. Um, it's kind of a hard question to answer because I don't know if I would have still, um, been in science, I think that if I would have, I wouldn't have, like, as strong of an interest in it, or I might be, like, interested in an entirely different field, because, um, from when I was little up to now, my, both my parents, um, my teachers, um, my clubs, they've all been encouraging me to take part in, like, the STEM field, mm -hmm. and without that, um, I know when I was little, I kind of wanted to be an artist, so maybe I would have gone in, like, a different direction. Um, what obstacles did you face in pursuing your career? Because I know, as we said, diversity was one of the issues. Mm -hmm. What obstacles did you personally face? I feel like when it comes to science, there's no easy answer. Like, if you think the answer is on the surface, it's really not, because then you have to dig deeper. Mm -hmm. I think it's the digging deeper that gets more complex that becomes an obstacle for me. Um, I think that was the expectations of people around me that was kind of an obstacle because my um, my dad was like interested in science yeah. and my teachers and my mentors were like I was participating in all these sciencey things and I was mm -hmm. kind of expected to do something sciencey and be good at it and then as I kept on doing it uh, other things got in the way like um, just some teachers didn't really teach their um, content well and that kind of made me think maybe science isn't really that fun and all we would do is like formulas and such as that mm -hmm. and that kind of got me thinking well if this is what science is am I really going to do this for like my whole life and that was an obstacle that I had to face. Did you ever overcome that obstacle? Like, uh, you okay. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> no I think like you just learn and move on I don't I don't think it's an obstacle that you can actually like just put away. I think it's just a lesson learned and a you know. But you can handle it better now than yeah. ever. All right. So hi guys. Hi. Um, do you think diversity is important to science, and if so, why? Uh, definitely, because we have to remind ourselves that we all come from different parts of the world and different regions, different weathers, and like there's too many great minds. 7 billion people on this planet like 7 billion different DNAs and I feel like it only makes sense for like everyone to never feel limited to ever like be curious because that's what science is about and if someone's ever if someone ever feels like they're being held back because of their race or gender or whoever they are then that really stinks they shouldn't because as humans we're naturally curious and everyone has something to offer I would say it's important because each person has a different environment they're coming from and each environment holds different ideas, different viewpoints. And so that would probably make answering the questions in science easier if you have different perspectives and viewpoints telling them where to go and like what problems to look at or how to look at the problem. And so it probably makes it easier for science or scientists to answer questions. Um, how do you think science influenced the world we live in today? Um, since like times of from Galileo Galilei <laughs> up to like scientists now, it's like you're really thankful. You're really thankful for a lot of scientists, and I feel like their curiosity never stopped. I think even though you might not have the title scientist, we're all scientists in our own way because we naturally are curious beings. So I feel like just the fact that we're always curious has been changing the way we look like television these cameras did not exist thousands of years ago yeah, and basically science has been helping people with health like we see people living longer than they were 50 years ago and so if science is evolving and it's helping people not only with yeah with medicine mainly that's the biggest issue well biggest effect impact I think it had but also technology itself we see everything in today's day and age is mainly surrounded by technology but if you like 
decades ago. It wasn't like that. I heard you said like how scientists are naturally curious and that made new technologies and new innovations. Yeah. So how do you think we can get kids curious and get kids more involved to STEM that way? I think kids like we with social media now we can definitely have leaders out there doing like I don't know hashtag science hashtag <laughs> STEM or now hashtag STEAM apparently because of the A in art. Yeah. But like I feel like. Use what we have now, because I know it's not impossible to spread the word on science. Usually, what you see on the media influences how you want to grow up. Like, if you don't see someone of your gender as a scientist, on t- it's always a mad, evil scientist on TV. But let's say you have scientists of color and who are male and female, like side by sides with other races, it's gonna be like impactful for little kids to see like someone who looks like them on TV or like just social media use all your resources you know yeah I was gonna say basically get him like how she said STEM is becoming STEAM the art part of it like on TV if they see like there's science parts to it like there's a nice show it's like a show they like and they incorporate science to it they probably won't notice that they're actually learning the science and then probably when they get older they'll be like oh they won't notice they're doing science but they really are and so it'd probably like get them more into it without them even realizing it so I feel like it's mainly the art aspect of science that they need to focus on um and I hear you guys have some questions for me yeah yeah would you like to start it off um why is diversity important for science it's a really good question so Um, I'd say that diversity is important for science because as a group of people, um, we're sort of developing science to understand the universe for all of us. And so when that group, when that study is dominated by a set demographic, then you don't get the other opinions of the other people that are going to be affected by said science. And that's really important because science is supposed to be beneficial for all of us. Okay. Um, how did you get involved with science? Um, so as a, as a kid, I sort of had this like mindset that I wanted to be a scientist and that I found it interesting. Like, oh, this is like cool stuff. I'm discovering things about the world and like the universe and what does it mean to me? Um, but then when I was in sixth grade, I had this really awesome science teacher who just, he made you get excited about studying science and learning things. And we covered a whole bunch of ranges of topics. Some I like better than others, but he still really like, he sort of gave me this idea that science is cool and science is fun and it's like fascinating to learn all these cool facts and stuff. So do you feel that interactive science is more um, interesting than textbook science and reading like formulas? Oh, it definitely is. When you're actually there and you're, you're performing experiments and you're doing things for yourself and you're doing your own learning, it really, it makes you feel a part of the thing and you're not just memorizing stuff in a textbook, but you're actually making contributions that can better the people around you. Did you face any obstacles with science? Um, not in particular. I think the main obstacle I I have faced or would have faced is the capabil like my own capabilities and the like and the teachers and stuff I've encountered. Um, because you know I've had some teachers where they really do they have to follow the curriculum and they have no they don't really give you any space to do your own thing um, and then I've had other teachers who are like oh yeah you know go do whatever um, and it's so that I feel like that's like sort of the conventional science limitations are what affected me the most so how did you overcome those obstacles of having like bad teachers and stuff? <laughs> I really um, I tried to make science my own and in places where um, science wasn't, like, when I wasn't able to study what I wanted to study, I'd go out and do it on my own. Yeah. Um, and I'd sort of be like, well, this is cool and this is helpful, but I can also use the resources that are providing me in the classroom to go do my own experiments. Um, and that was really beneficial because it also sort of got me thinking about how to solve, like, problem solving in itself, but then also um, learning about things like I did by performing my own experiments. So did you really consider your teachers as mentors? I did. Um, I've had a wide range of science teachers over the years, and some have been better than others, um, but they've all sort of, sort of set foot that these are the things we've learned in science, but I'm really trying to inspire you to go out and make your own discoveries for humanity. Um, were you always into science? I was. Um, 
And actually, when I uh, first got into high school, I was less so, because uh, I found it was not exactly my strong suit compared to some of my peers, and that really was a bit of a setback. Um, but then I, I sort of ignored that and was just like, whatever, I'll, I'll keep doing it, I'll keep going with it. And I like, the sort of image I had as uh, a, a smaller kid was great, like, it was enough that I was like, this is really something I can do. I have no idea what kind of fields of science are out there or whatever, but, I, like, this is something that would be very enjoyable. Um, and I got in it, and I was like, okay, this is technical, and with the teachers that were not so good, I had, science kind of got boring in a little spaces, mm-hmm. but I was like, I had my own motivation enough to do it myself. Um, and then, but like I said, when I got in high school and science was like, it was a lot harder than I had expected, I was like, okay, now I'm really having to make my own decisions and do... It, it was more, more of the weight was put on me. Um, and so it made me question how much science, I, like, uh, I'm really fond of history as well. So I was like, oh, I can sort of like give up science and go into history because history is something I know and history is something I'm good at. And it's like, you're not discovering new things. Like you're looking into the past. So it's sort of the opposite um, set of skills. But then I sort of came back to science and was like, this is something I really love. And it, Science is all about making mistakes and learning from them and doing things over and over again to try to get the best result and really refine your experiments and refine your knowledge and things like that. So in the beginning, you mentioned there was a lack of diversity. What are some factors that you think that caused lack of diversity? I think it all revolves around the scientific or workplace culture, unfortunately, Um, because when science was sort of first advertised, it would only people who looked like me were allowed to perform it. And it's really unfortunate because, as I said, this is a science that's... Science is supposed to benefit all of humanity, so when it's dominated by people who look like me, you're losing all these other sets of experiences, which is just not okay. Different Different, backgrounds. Exactly. And different, just, like, different ways of life as well that really are... that all sort of figure out how you think about things. That's nice. Um, So did you ever work in groups with people of different um, races and cultures? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, and it was, I don't know. It shows you different views of life. Exactly. Like, you, it's, well. it's sort of, it, like, it lets you really bounce ideas off people who think about things differently. And that is so beneficial when you're trying to learn. And that's just, that's something that's straightforward. And it's also when you have peers who do have different experiences than yourself, it's easier to sort of like interact with them and be like, okay, that's really interesting. And then here's my set of experiences. And you put them together and you start learning things. And it's just, it, it really has like a nice even flow where you're just humans and you're just figuring stuff out for so yourself. So ultimately you learned more with different cultures yes. and new people. Yes. All right, that's cool. Um, how do you think we could bring more... Um people of color into the science field? That is a really good question. And the problem I have with that is because scientific culture is so dominated by people like me, it's off, they often get really aggressively discouraging to um, people who are different. And, and it's, I think the change of that sort of work culture and the sort of thoughts that that is okay needs to go away. And for now, that really just means that people, um, different people who are into science, they need to not be discouraged and really push through and really do what they can. Because, I mean, there are some idiots out there who are really, like, discriminatory, and that's just, it doesn't really help anybody. 